Break out your 3090s, boys, because today we're mining some Bitcoin. No, just kidding. Uh, today, we're talking about NVIDIA CUDA core programming. The reason I want to talk about this is because I think it's a really interesting topic of discussion when it comes to how to use different parts of your computer to do different things. So why would we do GPU programming, right? So GPUs are able to do extremely high throughput paralyzed processing. Um, this is in comparison to your CPU, which is designed for serialized execution in a low latency, fault tolerant kind of way. And the reason this happens is because of the way that the CPU and GPU are designed. If you look here on the left, you have a CPU and it has maybe eight to 16 cores and a core consists of a control unit and an ALU, right? The control unit does the logic control and the ALU does the math and it has cache where it can very quickly look up memory and data as it needs. It's meant to be serialized and very fault tolerant. Um, a GPU on the other hand is meant to do things extremely fast and extremely parallelized. They're designed with parallelization in mind. And that being said, the modern GPU, I think the 3090 has 11,000 cores, right? So if you are able to do data processing in a parallelized way, you wanna be using a GPU and you'll get way faster results out of it. So with that being said, what problems are good for a GPU? Well, like I said before, any problem that can benefit from mass parallelization is good for a GPU. So for example, uh, the common example used in talking about CUDA core programming is scalarize a large set of vectors, right? So we're gonna run through this example using the CPU model. So we have the vectors over here, one comma two is our first vector, the left column is A, and the middle column is B, and then the destination is gonna go into C and we have up to n number of vectors. How would we do this on a CPU? On a CPU, we would say for int i equals zero, and we would just iterate over this loop, and we just add them up, right, until we get to the very end. And what would actually happen in execution is we would have a very linear lookup vector element A, lookup vector element B, add it into C, and do that for the first, second, and up to nth execution. But what we actually over time get is we incur a cost in looking up and running the actual program that has to do this data lookup and, and mathematics. And over time, it becomes less efficient to do this serialized as opposed to using multiple cores. And that's where the GPU comes in. The way we would do this on a GPU is instead of serializing it and doing it you know, one by one by one, we could write a function that is meant to be used in a parallelized fashion. And we would assign that function in index for every vector that we have. And we'll figure out where that index comes from in a second. It's a pretty cool way that the CUDA framework set this up. But basically we would create this function and we would execute this function in parallel for every vector. And again, that I, the index we use to index into our vectors would come from the CUDA framework. And then as you can see here, our execution timeline, right? How long it takes to do this gets cut by, in this case, three, your gains would go up per the size of your n, right? So if your n is serialized out to 1024 elements, if you could do this in complete perfect parallelization, so 1024 cores, you would have a speed up of 1024x, right? So how do we determine where this i comes from? I know this graphic's a little complicated, but it's actually not that bad. So the way the CUDA framework is designed, it's meant to take away the complexity of parallelization. So the abstract away from the CPU to the GPU is what's known as a kernel, right? And a kernel consists of these things called grids, and then grids consist of blocks, and then blocks consist of threads. And what actually happens is when we execute a kernel, we tell the GPU how many grids and blocks and threads we want to have in our program. So for the case before where we have this n value, we can tell the GPU, hey, instantiate n number of blocks for this program. And within that function, we will actually get an index value that will represent the number of the block that we're in when this program executes. With that number, we can index into the array and the block will know which index to go into and do the math for you like. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually go into Visual Studio. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the CUDA core framework and I'm gonna run you through this very example and we're gonna do it in a way where NVIDIA parallelizes the problem for us and does it way faster than a CPU could. Let's get into it right now. 
Okay, so I'm going to assume that you guys already have Visual Studio 19 installed. Uh, if you don't, go ahead, pause the video, also like the video, uh, and install Visual Studio 2019. Um, then what we'll do is we'll go to this URL right here. So developer.nvidia.com slash CUDA downloads. And then you just download whatever OS you have. So I have Windows x86-64 and I have Windows 10 and I would like the local version. Uh, and you go ahead and hit download. And I'm gonna cancel this because I already have it. Um, once that executable gets downloaded, you just go ahead and run it. And I'll make sure I show you guys how that works real quick. Let me pull it up. Okay, great, we have the installer right there. Boom, um, it's gonna go ahead and self extract and run. Um, and it should give you the option to just do a full install. I'm not gonna walk you through how to do the install. I'm sure you guys can figure that out, but it's very painless. Um, once you get that thing installed, you should be able to just open up Visual Studio and then that new project, you should have the option way at the bottom to do a CUDA 11.3 runtime project. Hit next a few times, blah, 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 blah. We'll do my vector project. That will actually give you a lot of code that you don't need. I get, open that project and I delete all of it, except for the include lines for the CUDA runtime header files, uh, the obviously standard IO, and then I leave my blank main function, right? Um, so once we have that, we need to start writing some code. So to go back to our example, we're gonna create three arrays to represent our vectors. So one, two, three is our A, and remember that's the left-hand column of those arrays, or of those vectors rather. And we'll do four, five, six, and then we wanna have our destination, uh, our destination array, and that's going to be of size, size of A divided by size of int and we'll set it all to zero. Okay, great. So now I'm just gonna write the CPU example, which is really simple, right? For i equals zero, i less than uh, size of c over size of int i plus plus, c of i equals a of i plus b of i. And we'll say uh, return and we're gonna to wanna to break right here to prove that C actually got set. So it should be, right, five, seven, nine. And we'll run that real quick. Yep, let me see here, we got five. I'll, I'll zoom in for you guys, actually it's pretty small. Um, five, seven, and nine in our vector. Right, very, very cool. Okay, well that's boring. That's the CPU example. We wanna use the GPU to do this, right? How do we do that? Um, there's a couple things we have to do, right? So first we need to have a pointer that points into memory that is controlled by the GPU. So we're gonna have int star CUDA A equals zero. This is going to be a pointer to the GPU's memory. We're gonna do that actually three times. And that'll be CUDA B and CUDA C. What we wanna do is we wanna actually allocate memory in the GPU to copy our data out to. The way we do that is with CUDA malloc. And CUDA malloc takes a pointer pointer, so we're gonna actually overwrite CUDA A on the stack with this value, right? So it's gonna be the address of CUDA A, and how much do we allocate? We're gonna allocate size of A bytes. And that's correct, because this is the, the size of A. And we can just copy this and do it three times. So we're gonna allocate CUDA B, CUDA C, CUDA and then A, B, and C. Okay, great, so if this all happens correctly, which we should check for return values, but today we're being bad programmers, um, we should get pointers into the GPU that have enough room to, uh, to hold all of our vectors. Okay, so now that we have all the room to hold our vectors, we need to put the vectors into the GPU for processing, right? So we use CUDA mem copy to do this, and the destination is going to be CUDA A, the source is going to be from A, and the count is the size of A. This is your standard mem copy, right? You have destination, source, and size. The final thing you have to do is you have to actually tell the CUDA framework what direction is the data going? Is it going from the host to the device or the device to the host? So the host in this case is CPU, the device to the GPU. And in this case, we are going from uh, CUDA mem copy host to device. And we can, again, copy this three times. Boom, boom, boom. Q to B, Q to C, B, C, B, and C. Okay, and we're gonna start commenting to make this a little easier. So create pointers into the GPU, allocate memory in the GPU, and then 
copy the vectors into the GPU. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? Create these pointers, malloc memory to them, and then mem copy into them, great. And we're gonna get rid of our CPU example, because again, that's like hyper boring, no one cares about CPU vectors. Um, great, so now we have our memory put into, actually we can just skip this line because it's zero at this point, so we don't have to do that. Um, now we want to run our code that adds these vectors together, okay? So how do we do that? Well, first we have to write our program that gets ran in the GPU or write our function. So the way you do that is what's called a double-double global. This double-double global tells the compiler that this is going to be a function that actually gets ran in the GPU. So it prepares it that way and it creates the memory map so that the GPU knows how to pick it up. Okay, so then we say void because we don't want it to return anything. And then we say vector add. And it's gonna take three parameters, A, B, and C. And note these are all pointers, right? Because we're, we're giving a function that is able to be parallelized to the GPU. And then the GPU is going to handle it using the CUDA block grid thread framework, right? And then what we're gonna do is we need to access the elements based on the index of the thread that we are. And the way that works is we say that int i, which is our index we're gonna use to index into the arrays, is equal to thread idx dot x. So what this means is that we are going to create a list of threads and this will get called on every vector in the list. This X value is going to represent the number of the vector that we are, and we're gonna use that to index into these arrays and add them up. Boom, there we go, and then return, but it's a void, so I mean, it'll, it'll automatically return. Um, okay, great, so now we need to instantiate this. We need to run this, right? How do we do that? The way we do it, is we say the name of our function, vector add, but then we have to add the special syntax, which is one, two, three carats. And the syntax that we use here is grid size, block size. We're not actually gonna leave these here, I just wanna kind of explain this. So the grid size is the size of the grid, which means it is the number of blocks that we have. And then we say the block size. So per amount of blocks in here, this says how many threads exist per block. So I'm going to say we only want one block because it's not a very big program. I don't want to over parallelize it. And that will actually cause issues here if I do anything outside of one block. And then the block size is actually going to be the number of vectors. And what is the number of vectors? It's size of A over size of N. And then I call it with the parameters, CUDA A, CUDA B, CUDA C. So at this point, and again, there's gonna be an error here. It will actually compile just fine. You can just ignore this. Um, so what will happen here is the CPU will tell the GPU, hey, run this function vector add in a CUDA kernel with a grid that has one block and that block has this many threads and call it with these parameters. That will get ran here. And then for every thread, we do our thing and we add the values together, right? And then finally, once that happens, I'm gonna delete the CPU part first because I wanna confirm to you guys that you know, this actually happens. So then once we have that, we want to CUDA mem copy the result out of CUDA C. So the destination is going to be C, the source is going to be CUDA C, and then the size is going to be size of C. And instead of being a host to device, this is going to be a device to host. And again, we're gonna break right here and just prove to you guys that that happens. So we'll go ahead and run this. So we're at the return here. So here is C, you can see that C579 got parallelized and it actually added them in the GPU and then it brought them out. Um, so what we can do is we can actually make our, our vector a little bit bigger here. So I'll just go ahead and copy this bad boy. I'll make B the same way. And then C will grow dynamically with that. These things will all be the same. Yep, so we can actually stop and run this again. I'll show you guys how it works. It should, based on this number, properly instantiate and add our vector together. Yep, boom, so you see that what happened in C is it just added all these together. So again, pretty cool, right? What's happening? We're creating these vectors locally on our computer. We're creating a destination register on our computer. We're saying these are going to be pointers into the GPU. We allocate memory in the GPU and overwrite those pointers. 
We then mem copy from our computer to the GPU using this flag here. And then we say, run this function this many times in parallel with these parameters. And then once that's been executed, copy that memory out of the GPU, and then we display it here. Guys, I hope that was useful. I hope you guys learned something. The power of the GPU is you know, very, very high. You just need to learn how to write a program that can parallelize in a way that can be useful when you're doing CUDA core programming. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.